Mr. Scarpetta, please.
and uh, uh, together with that, of course, team and data center, we support the security provisions uh, quite closely. As you can see in the right hand side, uh, you see that the public spending for the program is uh, the third highest um, among the, the different open countries. But of course, on the other hand, we have to get uh, 20% of the significant uh, uh, aging of the population. Uh, and given that, uh, basically, 26% of the population is in 65 uh, years or older, in a matter of five ten years. So there is, on the one end, a significant rapid aging of the population, and on the other end, also because of uh, the significant spending of the program. Uh, so the quick question is how to make the social program uh, affordable, uh, but also to try to avoid uh, the possible further spending. Here we have a different position of public social spending for the good social policy area. As you can see that, of course, a lot of focus is seen on that, a number of other examples going to the current pension system to try to contain the potential significant increase in pension expenditure. But in general, of course, there's also a significant component of income support going to the working age group, the working age population. And I think this is also an area in which a significant focus is going to be to the potential for the day. Not necessarily to reduce the spending, but also to make sure that the spending goes or to go to the user support. Topic, it was to the jobless people that uh, uh, were working with social The good news again is that Finland, uh, when we look at the, the income support, in Finland it seems to be very well targeted. Here we look after the, uh, the resources going to the poorest compile, which is the bar, compared to the resources going to the richest compile. And you can see in Finland again it is on the left hand side because it's the, the country in which the Large, the largest, if not the largest fraction of total social costs that go to the poorest, that go to potential needed the most. And again, this means that there is a good targeting for social costs as compared to a number of other Asian countries, but still the potential should be given to the kind of uh, support that we need to uh, the lower kind of the institution in this. Now, the other important part of Finland is also that uh, um, it's a very high competitive level market in the sense that there are high share of the liberal force with high level of education and the competencies. As you know very well, Finland uh, is a top performer, one of the top performers when we look at both uh, the international assessment of skills among the young people to the education for the teens as well, as well as when we look at the other population to the other people. At the same time, Finland is a country with a very complex group that makes it difficult for those with low level of skills and competence to find their way into the labor market. And uh, indeed, when we look at the uh, 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 labor demand by skill level, we see Finland is all the way on the left hand side of this chart because uh, uh, among the countries of this the high skill education, Finland accounts for 40 95% of employment in education with unmet. Which is one of the very few countries in which there is no unmet demand for the low skill. This of course points to the fact that yes, indeed, there is unmet demand, but this is highly concentrated among those with high level of skill. So the question which is at the core of this report, given this uh, general concept that I was once the presented by this review, is uh, <coughs> what approach is likely to be most effective and coherent. Uh, raising the employment rate in Finland, which is the target that again has been set up, is that an ambitious target that in a short period of time, requires, in our view, the very clear understanding of the barriers that stand in the way of successive labor market participation of some of the disadvantaged groups. And I think our main method also is that we have to focus on people, because I think, uh, as you will see in a second, the presentation from Emily Parsky, uh, a number of individuals that Careers into the labor market more than one career. So it's not just a question of a person going at the turn of the medical cases, but actually the complex web of kind of their cases that interact with one another that makes the then the participation to the labor market difficult. Sometimes, for many of them, maybe the low level of competence and skill they have acquired to the education system or during, even during their working time, but sometimes this is complemented by a number of other challenges that have to be addressed. So this entangled the complex web of employment difficulties in which the aim of the report that we are going to do is to provide an in-depth diagnostic of the 
information, and from that, we hope, also provide a number of insights that can be useful to identify what is the best policy strategies that might be most effective for this country to keep the world difficult in a fully integrated to the world. So with that, I'll start with the this I give the floor to Emily, and uh, she will share on screen and also to the Thank you for your attention. You should okay. be fine now. Okay, okay, I'm good. Okay. So let me let me take off where, where Stefano left off. Um, he's mentioned already that we need... To, you have a very good system of, of targeted income support, but we really need to think about how we can target employment support and how we can really reach those, take it people in, uh, a people-focused, people-centered, uh, approach to, to helping people into employment. So some of the questions that that, that, that that we're thinking of when we when we began work on this report, uh, what are the potential sources of employment growth in Finland to try and reach that target that, that Stefano has already talked about, that the 75%? What are the key barriers that keep people from engaging fully in the labor market? What are the faces of joblessness? So what are the, the groups of individuals that fair, share similar combinations of of, of barriers that we can try and target in a coordinated way, the barriers that they face, and how can we ensure that policies are well targeted and tailored to their needs and circumstances? So this is a, these are the questions that this report is, is, is trying to get at. So just to begin with where we are, um, across the OECD, there tends to be widespread consensus that employment support is effective when it's closely targeted and tailored to individual needs and characteristics. But many of the indicators on which we base the bulk of our analysis have no clear link with the barriers to employment. So youth in and of itself is not a barrier to employment. And sometimes that's not such a problem when it's descriptive, but sometimes we really miss, even when we do more complex disaggregations, like you can think of female migrant. Female migrants in Finland tend to have relatively low employment rates. But if you think of a perhaps a humanitarian migrant with very little, with very low levels of education and potentially children, she's likely to have a lot of different, quite different barriers to a female migrant who's perhaps a, a, a labor migrant from Estonia and so has less language difficulties. So really, by telling you the name of the group, it doesn't actually give us very much information about why they're outside work and what might help them get into work. Um, so in, in addition, another problem with these, with these headlines that we usually use is there's actually very little family context, which can actually prove quite um, inhibiting in some ways, because often, for example, childcare duties or household income can have quite a, a big effect on, on labor market incentives, but also ability to work. And without that information, we, we miss a lot of the barriers that people face. So what a lot of countries are doing, and Finland included, is increasingly turning to profile systems to try and get more at the individual characteristics that are, that are defining and shaping the constraints that individuals face when they, when they try to find stable work. The problem here is that looking at registered job seekers, they often miss large parts of the jobless population and the inactive. So we often treat in silos the job, the, the unemployed and the inactive, when in, in many cases they share a lot of the same barriers or certainly they're on a spectrum of, 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 of that barrier. Um, they often focus on simple scores and don't give us much detail about the specific barriers that the individual face, and the information is aggregated in a way that doesn't always facilitate uh, policy design. 
And so they can be useful for employment services, but they don't give us much information to feed into the higher policy level dialogue and trying to design policies to work together in a coordinated manner to, to tackle barriers that, might, that often arise uh, concurrently. So often we might find that existing programs, they're often of the right type, but they might be poorly adapted to the needs of the jobless. So they might not fulfill their full potential. So one of the things that we might think about, for example, is bottlenecks. Um, that if, for example, an, an individual, well, let, let me give an example. Again, let's come back to the female migrant. If uh, a female migrant has children, but also doesn't speak the Finnish language, then if we offer her language classes, but she can't attend, so because she has to look up her children, it's it's not neither one of the then the language classes aren't going to have a, a, a very impressive effect, even if they're really sorely needed. So actually what a number of countries have done is provided for those two uh, things together. So a, a woman can, for example, learn the language whilst her children are being looked after at the potentially the place. And that's been really effective. But that's been that's in a way that's a barrier that's very often uh, co arising together. But there are other barriers that perhaps we might not be aware of the fact that they're frequently coming together. And so we're not intuitively able to address them together in that way. So this basis of joblessness is taking a more systematic approach to try and identify uh, co-integrated or co barriers that arrive uh, in coincidence. So uh, what does the basis of joblessness approach do? Uh, it identifies groups in need of targeted employment support. Um, and it, it looks at whether all these groups are on the radar of policy. So some groups we're really aware of, they're in the policy discussion. I've already talked, spoken about, about migrants. We all know uh, that that's an issue, but there may be other groups that are slightly below the radar and that haven't received uh, the attention that they need, sometimes potentially quite large groups. So we're going to try and look a bit more closely at that. Um, and we're going to try and see how we might facilitate a cross-sectoral perspective and a coordination across institutions to try and target support, both social and employment support, to, to barriers that frequently occur uh, in tandem. Uh, at the end, towards the end, we're also going to think about how it might, we might tailor support effectively, because um, it may be that for some groups, uh, a skills intervention might be really very helpful, whereas for other groups, it may be more that investing in health interventions would be more effective in moving them into stable employment. So how can we tailor interventions to the circumstances? How can we integrate services in a way that work for, works for the, for the client? And that's more or less the approach we're taking here. Um, okay. So let's think about first, who are the jobless? Um, in Finland, you can see that of the jobless, there are, well, of the working age population, close to 19% are persistently out of work. 42% of these are unemployed, 15% retired. Quite stark, what, what jumps out to me in an international context is relatively high, is 30% 30, 30 are unfit to work and therefore inactive. There's a further 10% on domestic tasks and 3% on other inactive. But interestingly, in this report, we really want to broaden the, the perspective of joblessness beyond just the unemployed. So we also want to look at those who are in unstable jobs, those who are earning very low earnings, and those who are, who are working just restricted hours and not able to find a full-time work. Um, so we really broaden this out because we feel that many of those who aren't able to find stable employment may share many of the, of the difficulties and the barriers of those who, who are uh, persistently out of employment. So let's just take a very brief look, bird's eye view, on, 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 on what uh, different age groups and different sexes uh, uh, are, are doing at the moment of the joblessness. <clears throat> the first thing I think that stands out to me is the large number of young people who, who, are, um, who are in unstable work uh, and weakly attached to the labor market. So this might be one area of focus. Um, then another thing that stands out is the large number of unemployed, particularly men who are at the old, at the end, towards the end of their working lives. And actually you can see that between the ages of 50 to 59 and then 60 to 64, unemployment actually increases by 2.2 percentage points. Um, this isn't this isn't 
entirely evident why this should be the case. You would think perhaps as, as more uh, retired, the unemployment people would, would perhaps go down. And in many OCDs, in the majority of OCD countries, it does go down towards the end of working life. In Finland, it actually goes up and it goes up by the largest amount. So, so that's quite striking as well. Um, <clears throat> and then again, well, obviously there's the retirement in later ages. You can see that there's still, a, particularly among men, a number who retire early after the age of 55. But then here, strikingly, and we've spoken about it already to some extent, uh, the large numbers that are unable to work, um, particularly what strikes me, I mean, of what we might expect them to be unable to work, to help to, 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 to become a little bit more impeded in later life. But what strikes me is really the large numbers that are unable to work already in their 20s and 30s. And that's quite, that, that's quite stark. We also have some doing domestic tasks and other inactive. So what, are the, how do we, what approach do we take in, in, in this uh, review? We've tried to think about the barriers that might face in individuals in Finland and might impede their full-time stable labor market um, activity and then we do they have is their health uh, at a level where they can undertake meaningful employment and do they have care responsibility so in a sense this is sort of the supply side component of, of of the picture and so we try to compare what the individual would have if they were on benefits given their various characteristics with what wage they might earn in the labor market uh, again given their various characteristics their education their age uh, this kind of thing. So we compare their in and out of work uh, potential incomes to see if that might compromise their, 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 their work incentives. We also look at non-labor income, for example, capital, capital income or earnings of other family members. So if you have, for example, a very uh, high earning spouse, you may not feel the compulsion to work, at least for financial reasons. Um, finally, the final pillar is job search effectiveness. So poor job skills, could it be that the, the individual has poor job search skills? Do they have a very high reservation wage or job quality reservation? Is there discrimination that might impede, that, I mean, they're not, they're not successfully finding work? Or are there scarce opportunities in their relevant labor market segment? So given their skill and education and location. So, these are the barriers and how the incidence of the barriers in Finland. Um, again, what's, what strikes me here is the health problems, the extent to which health is, 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 is a reported health is, is a problem in Finland. In fact, 1.9 million Finns of working age report that a disability or chronic disease, uh, that they have a disability or chronic disease and about that's about half of the working age population. So it's a really large number. And what about one third of those say that it compromises either their work or their work opportunity. So it's a, at least reported health is, is a big deal uh, in Finland in terms of labor market access. Um, and it's particularly true among the unemployed. Uh, physical and mental health can often lead to poor work performance and hence job loss. At the same time, job loss and extended periods of unemployment can also lead to, to health, particularly mental health problems. So often you can see that these go hand in hand. And in fact, reported health uh, problems in Finland are 26 percentage points higher among those who are out of work than among those who are employed. And that's quite a, a large disparity and it's substantially larger than the, the European average, which is 14 percentage points. Um, another, you know, we. Use, uh, Stefano has already spoken about the the, the excess or the the demand for, for high skilled labor in Finland. And you can see actually for those with low education and low professional skills, it, it does re represent a barrier for a fair number of, of the jobless, 25% and 23% respectively are facing those barriers. And then some of the other barriers that we focus a lot on potential barrier, but for others, but they're not at all among the, the most common barrier facing, facing individuals. So that's just one aspect. That's the aspect of, of how many incidents of barriers do individuals face multiple barriers at the same time. And actually, you can see that there's quite a large number that face two or more barriers, close to 70% face at least two barriers. So it really is important that we think about how we can address these barriers together. But the other thing that stands out to me in, the, in an international context is actually there's a relatively large number that don't face that many barriers, that just face either no major barrier 
or a single barrier. And so this really suggests to me that there's some scope for, for potentially low-hanging fruit and thinking about how to move those individuals into stable. So let's go down to the policy groups. And now there are eight of them. I'm probably going to go a little bit faster over some than over others. Uh, you've asked me, or we've been asked to present them all, but it, clearly it's uh, it's a lot of information. So I, I, I'll go I'll go into more detail in a couple, but I may go relatively fast on, on some others. So this is the first and largest group. It counts to 26% of the population. You can see that the major barriers that they're facing is one, uh, well, they have no recent work experience. They've been out of work for, for quite some time, at least during the whole reference year that the, that the survey was based upon. 61% report poor health and 32% have uh, low education. So the average age of this group is 55. You can imagine that they should really have um, many years of productive work ahead of them. Despite that, only 9% are actively seeking work. So that they've, they've given up in a, in a sense. And these are individuals who are predominantly located in rural areas. Um, and so you can see that I've put here that benefit receipt is relatively common among this group, a large number on sickness and disability benefits. But that said, um, it's important to note that there's only, we, we spoke earlier about the barrier of having relatively high benefits compared to what you could potentially earn in the labor market. And there's only about 10% of this group for whom that's an issue. So it's not, it, there, there is high benefit receipt, but it's not sufficiently high in some cases to, to, to be enough to, to, uh, to keep them out of the labor market for that reason. Um, so here, yeah, here the big, the big issue is health. And I think one of the big policy questions in Finland will be how to combine health services with employment support. Because actually, ill health is often neglected in employment services. And many of those who report health difficulties are actually claiming unemployment benefits rather than sickness and disability benefits. And there's no systematic uh, support and assessment of those who are on unemployment benefits. And I think that's maybe something that needs to be looked at. Um, because access to health services in Finland is, is much easier for those who are in employment. And if those who, who, who are looking for work are left, uh, have their health issues left um, unaddressed, then health, lack of experience and, and unemployment can really be self-perpetuating and can just confound the problems and these individuals can, can drift further and further from the labour market. So I think that's something that, that, that requires further, further thought. The second group is the unstable workers. It's relatively large. It accounts for 20% of the um, total jobless population. But actually, interestingly, these guys aren't that far from the labour market in many cases. I think 44% of them have no barriers at all. Um, they're relatively high educated. 61% have an upper secondary or post-secondary education and 34% have a tertiary education. So, that, so they should be relatively close to the labour market. And you can see actually from the Venn diagram here that the three major barriers are high non-labor income, uh, reported health difficulties and skills. But actually each of those barriers is only, is only faced by a relatively small population within this group. And it's also quite heterogeneous in the sense that the barriers don't overlap for, for a large number of the individuals, for a large proportion of the individuals. So in Finland, I think you, you have several tracks uh, targeting or helping employment support for into work. And for those who are, who are deemed to be very close to the labor market, a lot of it's online and there isn't necessarily uh, a great deal of resources devoted to those. And, and, and that's probably necessary in many cases. And given the fact that this group may well be swelling in the coming in the coming months and potentially years after the COVID outbreak, I think we're going to have to think quite carefully about we, how we can target resources. But it, 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 this is, a, in a sense, a low-hanging fruit. And maybe thinking about how uh, making available support for those who need it might actually help these individuals moving into work quicker and not drifting further from the labour market. So here's the third group, skilled retirees. They're relatively older. Uh, 
They many have professional or managerial experience, and they're mostly affluent. So they have they tend to have high non labor income. So they have these sort of motivational uh, aspects as well. Um, so I'm not going to talk in great detail about those for now. Then there's also the urban job seekers. Most are men. The average age is 51. So towards the older end, but again, many years of fruitful work ahead, uh, potentially. Most report actively seeking work, in fact, 62%. They largely live in cities and they're relatively poor. 58% uh, are in the bottom income quintile. So that's really quite substantial. Uh, again, they're actively seeking work and many are on unemployment benefits or have claimed during the year unemployment benefits. But they're... So I think, uh, again, that the, the point to, to think about here it may be that this fruitless job search, you can see that the largest barrier, I put the three largest barriers in the corner here, the largest barrier facing them is unsuccessful job search that, that affects all of the individuals in this group. Uh, many have no re recent experience and then a large ma or a majority have health concerns, report health concerns. When we think about this unsuccessful job search, I mean, par partially it's likely to be about mismatches between the skills of these individuals and labor demand, but I think it's also important to bear in mind there may to some extent be an, an element of discrimination that may mean that in these individuals or if there were it, discrimination it would come in for this to this barrier in the way that we've modeled it um either age or or or, or for example migrant background and actually so that's why i wanted to take a little digression at this point to try and I've given you two pie charts here that give you the distribution of the faces of joblessness groups across the foreign born and the native born population. And the thing that I wanted I wanted to point out here and I've highlighted in blue is those groups where at least 50% of the group is actively seeking for work. And you can see that among the foreign born population, they really are concentrated in those groups who are really looking for work, not always successfully, uh, as, as we've just seen. So uh, to the extent that this might be based to some extent on employer uncertainty, if they have qualifications, for example, that are obtained abroad, or if they have no Finnish work experience, they might struggle to persuade employers to hire them. Then I really think we need to think about how to enable these, these individuals to get some early experience on the, on the Finnish, in the Finnish labor market. So here's another group, female carers. Uh, they're largely women, almost exclusively. The average age is 37. Virtually all have care responsibilities and many have high partner incomes or income from another source. Uh, so, I mean, this is a fairly well-defined group. I think you can, you can picture it fairly well. Then we turn to the low skilled youth. The average age is 32. Many have a lower education, a low level of education. And again, we discussed it briefly, touched on it earlier. Many already have health difficulties and 47%, even at that low age, are reporting that they have health difficulties. Um, but, and, uh, I mean, this, this group worries to some extent. There's a few are even actively seeking work. Only 29% are seeking work. So they've already become quite distant from the labor market, even at a, a young age. Um, the prime age low skilled. So these are a similar group. I mean, and it's not longitudinal data, so we can't say that this is the group that's aged, but they, they share many of the same barriers with, with, the, with the younger low skilled. Um, they have unsuccessful job search, no recent experience. And among this group, the health is even larger. It's affecting 81% of the group. Again, uh, slightly more than among the youth, they're seeking work, but activity is still fairly low. And the final group, oh, sorry, the policy challenge. Uh, um, so for me, this group, it, it, it seems like it, it, encourage, it encompasses a large number of, um, of uh, sorry, the word, the, the, the word slips. Uh, can't think of it. Individuals who've lost their jobs and uh, who are struggling to find new jobs. So perhaps their skills are uh, basic and elementary and they, they can't find uh, the labor demand for the, for the skills they're able to offer. Um, 
So I think for this group, a real challenge is going to be how to get early provision of training. If they if they move out of their of their if they if they lose their job, how can we quickly upskill them uh, in the early stages of their unemployment and move them into into expanding sectors quickly before this recent no recent work experience and health barriers compound over time. The final group, uh, limited incentives, they're relatively young, 34 years old. They virtually all have high earnings replacement and most are not actively seeking employment. However, interestingly, many live in affluent house, households. So it's not necessarily that, they're, that they're, despite high benefit receipt, they're not necessarily living uh, in, in poverty. Um, and the, the, the thing that struck me that I wanted to mention among this group is it's also potentially, there's, there's a larger number of, of women here and, and quite a high level of family benefit receipts. Um, and I wanted to talk quickly about the child home care allowance, which uh, I think is problematic or has been problematic uh, in keeping those women who, um, who have potentially low earnings on the labor market, incentivizing them to stay at, in the home and look after their children in the home. And actually, when you look at uh, participation in early childcare in education and health, though very, very few report that they can't afford childhood education, and that's because it's income dependent, the fees are income dependent in Finland. Despite that fact, you still see that the, the low income, children from low income households are very much less likely to participate in early childhood education than those from high income households. So there's something beyond the house, the, the education, the childhood education fees that's inhibiting uh, uh, that participation. And for me, I think an important element of that is the child home care allowance that incentivize parents who would earn less on the labor market to keep their children at home and therefore benefit from that allowance. So now let's talk about targeting and tailoring. Um, I know we started late, but if you I'm, I'll try and go relatively quickly. Uh, so as we spoke about earlier, the proportion that this is how many face a number of groups, uh, how, how many face uh, multiple barriers across groups. So should we be targeting the low hanging fruit? And I've mentioned earlier that that was the unstable workers. Or should we instead be targeting our resources to older, low skilled, uh, to those who face really an, a large number of barriers and who would probably have quite heavy support needs? This, this is a policy question, uh, but we give some information that, that hopefully can inform it. Or should instead, um, well, <clears throat> here, uh, I wanted to mention that not only is it the number of barriers that they face, but moving individuals into work is also dependent on, on them looking for work and actively seeking work. So I've tried to highlight as we've gone through the proportion of the groups that are actively seeking work because they have to, yeah, they won't be moving into stable employment unless they're looking for it. And here you can see that those who are further from the origin here face uh, are probably the low hanging fruit in the sense that they face fewer barriers and they're also actively seeking work. So if we're talking about the low hanging fruit, this group two, uh, the unstable workers, is, is probably a good target. Or should we be focusing on boosting employment levels overall? In that case, perhaps we should be focusing on the larger groups. Groups one and two account for 46% of the jobless population uh, overall. So maybe that might be a focus of, of employment. Should we be focusing on um, retaining valuable skills in the labor market? And in fact, as I mentioned early, a large number of the skilled retirees have, have, uh, have uh, managerial, professional and technical skills. Over 50% of the group have, have those skills. So maybe we should be focusing on retaining those skills in the labor market. Or should we think about prioritizing the long-term payoff and targeting the youth uh, uh, before, their, before their barriers grow and expand and they start to resemble uh, this older group of low skill that here I see, you, I, I put the, the two Venn diagrams so you can see how the young over time, perhaps they may drift towards this more confounded, more distant from the labor force group uh, who's health difficulties have augmented over time and face many of the, the same barriers. Perhaps we should instead target the low skilled groups, hope, hoping for a long term payoff to prevent this older low skilled later on. Or should we be focusing on targeting, targeting poverty risks? And that here you can see that we've provided info, information on the number of group, individuals within the group that are in the bottom income quintile. 
So if we really care about poverty, then we should be moving the low skilled youth, the urban job seekers and the primate low skills into work and help them that way. So now let's talk about, I mean, all of this is a question for policy, but we wanted to put those potential uh, policy options on the table. But now let's talk about how we might best target, tailor support to the barriers of, of those we want to help move in, into employment. And here, you know, in the name of time, I'm just going to talk about one group. Um, so jobless are often confronted with complex and interrelated barriers. We've discussed this. Uh, which barriers could we address that might have the largest impact? Are there bottlenecks in that? If we address just one barrier, we won't have the desired effect because another barrier may still be impeding their labor market access. And are there potential synergies in the sense that if we address two barriers concurrently, might, might we achieve even more? So this can support policy prioritizing. It can quantify the role of barriers in determining the distance from stable em employment. And we try and estimate the impact of removing barriers on distance to stable employment. Removing barriers both individually and then trying to hypothetical exercise, but removing multiple barriers concurrently and examining what impact that would have on the likelihood that an individual found themselves in stable employment. So here I just look at the rural inactive. Uh, the major barriers facing this group are low education, it faces 32%, poor health faces 61%, and 16% of the individuals in this group face both low education and health concurrently. So among those who are in low education, the probability who have a low education, the probability that they face labor market difficulties is 20%. Among those who report health difficulties, the probability that they face labor market difficulties, that they find themselves in this jobless population we've been looking at, uh, <clears throat> is, is slightly higher, about 25% slightly below that. And individuals who face both these barriers concurrently are likely to be in this jobless population with 45% probability. So what about policy that targets, targets these barriers? Well, if, low ed, if for the individuals that face both barriers, if low education is addressed, it reduces the probability that they'll be in this jobless population <clears throat> by um, to about 23%. If poor health is addressed, it reduces the probability that they'll be in the jobless population to about 14%. But if we address them both concurrently, we managed to get the probability that they'll be in uh, the jobless population down to below 10%. So you can see that actually, if we were to address just one barrier, potentially we would consider it more worthwhile to address the health barrier. But really, ideally, we would like to address both those barriers because there are some individuals <clears throat> who face these two barriers who, if we just address one, they'll still be out of the labor market and while and, and, and they won't necessarily benefit in terms of employment of having that barrier addressed. So just to conclude now, these are the questions we started out with at the beginning of the presentation. What are the potential sources of employment growth in Finland? Well, 18% of the working age population are without any uh, employment, and a further 9% were in unstable or marginal employment. These individuals, if we can move them into, into the labor market, into active and, full and stable work, uh, we can help to to support employment growth. What are the key barriers that keep people from engaging fully in the labor markets? Well, we've seen that reported health limitations and unsuccessful job search are really primary among those barriers. And many jobless face complex sets of obstacles, close to 70% face two or more obstacles concurrently. What are the faces of joblessness in Finland? Well, we've identified eight faces of joblessness, uh, the largest being the rural inactive and the unstable workers, but I've given you a few more details on the other groups as well. And how can we ensure that policies are well targeted and tailored to the needs and circumstances? Um, well, this report gives, I mean, I, I've been able to go through some of it, but there's a, there's a raft of information beyond what I've been able to present today within the report that gives a lot more detail on the circumstances of the individuals and the, the barriers that they face. So I really would encourage you to, um, to take a look at the report um, in, your, in your own time. Thank you. Paulina.
Hello? Well, thank you very much, Emily. I think if I understand from the program now is to Polina to uh, summarize okay. uh, some of the main findings of the report we finish before we go into the next uh, uh, item on our agenda. So Polina, if you can hear us, you might want to take over. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scarpetta and Ms. Emily Farci, a lot for uh, presenting the results. And I strongly apologize for our, our technical problems. It's always like this when joining from all over the world with different techniques. And, but hey, we're learning and learning by doing. Um, and in the program, I stated that I would do the, I would do a quick recap, a quick summary of the results in Finnish. But uh, due to our timetable, I think we will just skip that, and you can find the results and the press re release and the report from our website, uh, from the website of Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. And we will also uh, do a complete recording of this, of this uh, speeches of uh, Mr. Stefano Scarpetta and Miss Emily Farci. So don't worry, we will do it again and put it for you to watch later on YouTube. And now we heard, unfortunately, that the state sec secretaries uh, unfortunately can't make it. So. Um, we will have from the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, uh, Jere Päivinen, to fill in for, for Saila Ruut, who is the State Secretary from Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. And after that, uh, we will have Päivi Haavistovuori to fill in the min Päivi Haavistovuori, Ministerial Advisor from Ministry of uh, economic Affairs and Employment to fill in for the State Secretary Ville Kopra. So now I will ask Jere, please. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as you heard, the uh, State Secretary Sala Rood won't be able to attend, so I will happily fill in ho for her and then uh, say a few remarks from our side. Uh, well, representatives from the OECD, participants, I'm pleased to be here today and see so many participants attending these events online. I would like to begin by thanking Director Scarpetta, Hervik Immervol and Emily Farzi for their remarks and introduction of the Faces of Joblessness report. The goal of the Finnish government is to promote well-being and decrease inequalities and poverty. The report provides valuable information to support the work of the Finnish government and forthcoming reforms. I will now continue in Finnish. Thank you. Hyvät kuulijat, kuten totesin, hallitusohjelmassa on asetettu tavoitteeksi hyvinvoinnin edistäminen ja eriarvoisuuden sekä köyhyyden vähentäminen. Myös työllisyysasteen nosto on yksi keskeinen hallituksen tavoite. Tämä kunnianhimoinen työllisyystavoite edellyttää sosiaaliturvan uudistamista sekä panostuksia työkykyyn ja työhyvinvointiin. Parlamentaarinen komitea aloitti keväällä työnsä sosiaaliturvan uudistamiseksi. Komitea uudistaa sosiaaliturvaa kokonaisuutena. Se käsittelee perusturvaa, ansioturvaa, toimeentulotukea ja niiden välistä yhteyttä ja rahoitusta sekä palveluiden nykyistä parempaa yhteensovittamista etuuksiin. OECDn toteuttama Faces of Joblessness-tutkimus tuottaa arvokasta ja oikea-aikaista tietoa kaikkien näiden tavoitteiden kannalta. Työttömät eivät ole heterogeeninen ryhmä. Työttömyyden taustalla on useita tekijöitä, jotka saattavat usein olla samanaikaisia ja päällekkäisiä. Emme voi pysähtyä ensimmäiseen kohtaamaamme haasteeseen, vaan meidän tulisi kyetä tarkastelemaan ihmisten tilannetta laaja-alaisesti. Tutkimuksen tulokset tuottavat tältä näkökannalta erityisen kiinnostavaa tietoa. 
Työttömät ja heikosti työmarkkinoille kiinnittyneet henkilöt ovat jaotti tuloksissa kahdeksaan ryhmään ihmisten kohtaamien työllistymisen haasteiden mukaan, eikä henkilön ominaisuuksien, kuten iän, sukupuolen tai muun tiedon perusteella. Tästä huolimatta ryhmät erottuvat selvästi toisistaan ja rakentuvat yhteisten piirteiden varaan. Tämä auttaa katsomaan ihmisten tilannetta laaja-alaisesti ja tarkastelemaan ihmisten tarvitsemaa tukea poikkihallinnollisesti. Jaotteluryhmiin kiinnittää erinomaisesti huomiota siihen, että haasteiden määrissä on ryhmien välillä eroja. Esimerkiksi koltaan suurimman ryhmän osalta maaseutualueilla asuvat ei-aktiivisesti työtä hakevat kohtaavat useita merkittäviä päällekkäisiä haasteita työllistymisen kannalta. Toisaalta taas neljänneksi suurin ryhmä kaupunkialueella asuvien aktiivisesti työtä hakevien ryhmän osalta työllistymisen esteitä ei juurikaan ole lukuun ottamatta epäonnistumista työnhaussa. Työttömien ja heikosti työmarkkinoille kiinnittyneiden kokema terveydentilan heikkous on sen sijaan läpileikkaava haaste. Tämä on tulos, jota ei voi sivuuttaa. Työttömien kokemaan heikkoon terveydentilaan on kyettävä puuttumaan nykyistä paremmin. Tämä vaatii toimia sektorirajat ylittäen myös ennaltaehkäisevästi, jotta terveydentila ei johda työmarkkinoilta poistumaan. Hallituksen vuonna 2019 käynnistämä STM ja TEMin yhteinen työkykyohjelma pyrkii juuri tähän. Ohjelman tavoitteena on tukea osatyökykyisten työttömien ja pitkäaikaistyöttömien työhön pääsyä ja työssä pysymistä, ehkäistä työttömyyden pitkittymistä ja työkyvyttömyyttä sekä lisätä heikossa työmarkkina-asemassa olevien työelämäosallisuutta. Toinen erityisen huomionarvoinen tulos on ikääntyneiden osuus suurimmissa ryhmissä. Yksi keskeisimmistä eroista Suomen ja muiden Pohjoismaiden välillä on vanhempien ikäryhmien työllisyysasteissa. Tutkimus maalaa erityisesti tämän ryhmän kannalta haastavan kuvan. Ikääntyvät kuuluvat suurelta osin ryhmiin, jotka kohtaavat useita päällekkäisiä tai heidän työllistymisen päällekkäisiä haasteita tai heidän työllistymisensä kannustimet ovat heikot. Ikääntyneen työllisyysastetta ei voida nostaa yhdellä yksittäisellä toimenpiteellä. Hyvät kuulijat, Faces of Joblessness-raportti tarjoaa meille paljon ajateltavaa politiikkatoimien ja resurssien suunnittelun kannalta. Kaikkia työttömiä ei voida tukea samoilla toimenpiteillä, ja osa työttömistä tarvitsee tukea useisiin ongelmiin samanaikaisesti. Osa työttömistä kärsii ainoastaan työtilaisuuksien puutteesta tai epäonnistumisesta työnhaussa, kun taas toiset kohtaavat useita päällekkäisiä laajuudeltaan huomattavia haasteita. Tärkeä kysymys on, miten lähestymme työttömyyttä ja miten kykenemme tukemaan työttömiä eri hallinnonaloilla kuuluvilla palveluilla koordinoidusti. OECDn Faces of Joblessness-raportti ei tarjoa suoria vastauksia. Se kuitenkin vahvistaa sen, että hallituksen useat laaja-alaiset uudistustoimet ovat reitti vastata työttömy- työttömyyden haasteisiin. Sosiaaliturvauudistus on aivan keskeisessä asemassa. Palveluiden ja etuuksien yhteennivominen on toimi, jonka kriittisyyttä ei voi riittävästi painottaa tässä yhteydessä. On välttämätöntä löytää keinoja seurata systemaattisemmin palveluiden vaikuttavuutta. Tätä tukee työkykyohjelman seuranta ja arviointi. Samalla soteuudistus on tärkeä askel hiljattain annetun työllisyyspaketin tavoin kohti työttömien palveluiden ja etuuksien parempaa yhteensovittamista. Yli sektorirajat ylittävä yhteistyö on ratkaisevaa tässä työssä, ja tämä raportin julkistamistilaisuus on oiva esimerkki siitä. Dear participants, representatives from the OECD, as a conclusion, I would like to thank the OECD and the researchers for their valuable work on the report. I certainly believe that the insights of the report help us continue our work. Thank you. Kiitos. Good afternoon, everyone. Unfortunately, State Secretary Mr. Copra couldn't join the meeting due to technical problems, but I'll tell you something from the point of view from our minister. 
it's easy to agree that, uh, that an over, overall picture of the barriers to employment is necessary to support the planning of policies. It, this is used for, from the point of view of both the services provided to the individual and cross-sectoral policy solutions. Statistics and forecasts um, uh, describing the development, development and the state of unemployment are one part in the preparation of the policy measures. The fact that unemployment can be caused by several interrelated and complex factors is actually not new information. We need to have skills to identify the services needed and to provide targeted services in timely manner. Uh, jos sanoisin jotain tuloksista, eli tässä tutkimuksessa erityisesti malli ryhmitillä ihmisiä työttömyyden taustoja on mielenkiintoinen. Kun tarkastellaan, minkä verran ihmisiä yksittäiseen klusteriin kuuluu ja mitkä ovat yksittäisen klusterin keskeisen työllistymisen esteet, työttömyyden kuva laajenee. Jo kaksi suurinta ryhmää, Rural Inactive ja Unstable Work, poikkeavat profiililtaan toisistaan, joskin arvioidut terveydentilan ongelmat näyttäytyvät molemmissa. Raportissa huomio kiinnittyy Unfit to Work-ryhmään. Se muodostaa kolmanneksen niistä, jotka ovat persistently out of work, kuten raportissa todetaan. No tästä herää luonnollisesti kysymys, keitä tähän joukkoon kuuluu. Kyselyssä tulee esille terveydentilaa liittyviä seikkoja tässäkin tapauksessa. Tutkimus tuo esille myös ryhmiä, jotka etsivät aktiivisesti työtä tai haluavat työskennellä nykyistä enemmän. Taustalta heilläkin löytyy kuitenkin tekijöitä, jotka kaventavat mahdollisuuksia työllistyä. Ja raportin mukaanhan työttömät eivät ole ainoa tarkasteltava ryhmä, kun tavoitellaan työllisyysasteen nostamista. Tämä esittämistapa on myös kiinnostava. Etäisyys vakaalle työuralle työllistymisessä ja työllistymisen esteiden lukumäärän keskiarvo eivät ole samanlaisia kaikissa klustereissa ja ryhmissä. Se on myös mielenkiintoista nähdä, miten eri toimien kohdistamisen arvioidaan vaikuttavan kussakin klusterissa. Näyttää siltä, että useimmissa tapauksissa yhteen esteeseen tarttuminen, esimerkiksi skills-puutteiden korjaaminen yksinään, ei ole niin vaikuttavaa kuin tarttuminen yhtä aikaa toiseen työllistymistä haittaavaan tekijään. No miten tästä sitten eteenpäin mentäisiin? Tietysti hallitusohjelmassa ja Vuoden 2021 talousarvioesityksen työllisyyspaketissa on jo toimia, joilla voidaan vastata tässä tutkimuksessa esiin tulleisiin tarpeisiin. Ja tämä esitys, joka velvoittaa työttömät tulevaisuudessa entistä aktiivisemmin toimiin aktiivisessa työnhaussa, saa rinnalleen tärkeän elementin, entistä vahvemman TE-palveluiden tuen ja kaivatun henkilökohtaisen palvelun. Ja se pitää sanoa, että jo nyt tätä sektorirajat ylittävää yhteistyötä tehdään paljon ja myös palvelua tarjotaan yhdessä. Koska osaaminen on avaintekijä työmarkkinoilla, jatkuvan oppimisen uudistusta valmistellaan työ- ja elinkeinoministeriön ja opetus- ja kulttuuriministeriön aktiivisessa ja tiiviissä yhteistyössä. Tutkimus tuo tietoa myös ruohonjuuritason palveluiden järjestäjille. Osa työllistymisen esteistä jää piiloon työllistymistä tukevissa palveluissa, ja yksi tällainen on terveydelliset seikat. Ja TE-palveluissa malli työttömien ohjaamisesta terveystarkastuksiin se on tärkeä, mutta jatkossa täytyy ottaa vielä tarkemmin ja enemmän huomioon nuorten asiakasryhmien tarpeet. No, tällä hallituskaudellahan osatyökykyisten työllistymisessä otetaan uusi askel ja yksi tällainen ihan uusi, uusi on se, että Suomeen tullaan luoma, luomaan uusi välityömarkkinatoimijamalli. Ja, ja tuota, piakkoin tässä käynnistyy, tai itse asiassa on jo, on jo käynnistynyt, 
selvitystyö, jossa otetaan esimerkkejä menneestä työpankkikokeilusta ja sen tuloksista ja erityisesti Ruotsin Samhall-yhtiön toiminnasta. Ja vielä tähän raporttiin mennäkseni. This report is packaged with information. And as the report states, the study does not provide an outright, outright answer to, to how different policy measures and resources should be prioritized. Uh, thank you to the researchers for their valuable work. The report will pave the way for extensive discussion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jere and, and Paivi. And now we will have the panel discussion. Uh, no, um, I'm sorry. We'll, first we'll, we'll have uh, potentially questions from media, but uh, I haven't gotten them. Any questions at least now? So we will just move straight to the panel. And and Pasi Moisio, Chair of Social Reform Committee, will be leading the, leading the panel discussion. And then we will have, uh, we will have, uh, we will have uh, uh, panelists who can come join here. And please, you're welcome. And if we can get the technique working, we will also have from OECD uh, a researcher and economist Hervik Immerfall joining and also a senior specialist Mikko Valtakari from MDI Public. And please, panelists, you can also state your names and organizations where you're from. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so my name is Mina van Gerven and I'm Professor of Social and Public Policy from University of Helsinki. Thank you for the in invitation. Thank you for coming. Thank you. My name is Teija Hautara. I work at Kela uh, as a legal counsel and I work with um, unemployment benefits. Yes, I'm uh, Pasi Moosio. I'm a research professor from uh, National Health uh, and, and Social and Health uh, Institute, and I'm chairing this panel. And uh, thank you for uh, inviting us, Paula. And uh, I hope uh, Hervik and, and Mikko are on the, on the uh, other end of the uh, camera and in the web. Um, I hope. Uh, I'm just sharing uh, who will uh, to be with you. Well, they are showing that uh, Herbig and Mikko are online, so uh, hopefully uh, they are doing yeah. well. And, uh, and of course, you are in the home audience and, and office audience can, can hear and see them uh, more than us. So, uh, our panel uh, is concentrating on, on the uh, report, Faces of Jobless, which is a rather novel approach on, on uh, employment and unemployment issue uh, uh, for Finns. Uh, this is, you could say, uh, as the report says, this is a holistic approach. Uh, we're uh, using very uh, sophisticated uh, methods and, and, and uh, data. You silk. Uh, um, Emilia and, and her, her working uh, research team are, have been identifying uh, the groups that are, are facing uh, 
different set of, of, of uh, barriers for employment. Uh, and this way Hello. Uh, yes, I'm here. I can I can hear you. I hope uh, I hope you can hear me. Okay. Can you give me a sign if you if you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. All right. All right. Hello, Hervich. You should hear, you should us, hear us now. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. okay. So, so let's go back a bit. Uh, and uh, can you hear me now? So. Uh, so. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, um, let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so uh, uh, could you, uh, could you uh, tell, uh, tell a few words about, about yourself, about yourself please, please, for the audience? For the audience? I think we have I a time, we have a time delay. Lab, delay, lab here. delay here. So, uh, so uh, it might take about might 30 seconds before Eric hears my work. So, uh, so uh, yes, I can hear you. Now. I think there's a huge time lag there. Yeah. So, uh, I, hope, I hope this will work. Um, my, my name is Eric Dimofol, and uh, I'm, I'm leading all the work on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. And I am hope also Mikko. Valtekari is online there. And I think we need to wait another thirty seconds before Mikko. Hear our, hear our words, words. So, we just, so we just you know in keep silence, silence here and um, in the meantime, in the meantime trying to find my questions and, and start the uh, panel well and i hope my still i'm still uh, my sound still uh, still working So let's just go with, with the panel. At least the people are here. And, uh, and Teja and Minna. Well, luckily, we are here and we can discuss about this very uh, interesting report, uh, which was very, like I said, very demanding, very sophisticated, very, uh, uh, very ambitious, uh, both in policy level, but also in academic and, and in the mythology. So, and um, it seems that. Um, uh, uh, the report uh, identified eight employment barriers and what came out first, especially for, for, uh, for, especially for Finnish uh, compared to other countries, was the health limitations. So uh, what is your uh, view and opinion about this? Uh, is it really that the Finns, you know, the, those uh, unemployed and people who are not on uh, working or, or, or uh, weekly integrated in the labor markets they have uh, poor health, or this, you know, the Finns are uh, poor public health, or is this some kind of a proxy for some something else? Are the uh, labor markets so demanding in Finland, or is the cultural differences, like you know, saying understatement, culture of understatement, saying that, or is it something that, you know, it's a um, very Finnish way to uh, uh, impre uh, express the uh, many problems by saying that. It's a health issue, you know, for example, some other uh, obstacles. But, um, well, let's go in these issues. What, what is your uh, view on the, the main results of the report, uh, that the health uh, limitations are the, the, uh, the biggest uh, employment barrier in Finland? Let's start with Minna. Minna, you are the first uh, nearest me. Thank you. Yes, indeed, it, it was one of the, the leading uh, uh, insights, perhaps, if you will, from this report that there seems to be uh, a very large part of uh, jobless population that feel themselves indeed uh, in a poor health. Uh, if you look at the other OSCE reports, for example, for Norway or Belgium or Estonia, you actually do see quite similar findings. So people do feel themselves ill or they feel themselves in poor health elsewhere. So it's not only a Finnish issue, I would like to, to clarify here. Of course, there is something to be said about uh, the, the Finnish health system, which regarding to, to its, uh, uh, at the system level, the, the system is, w is actually working quite well. 
Uh, we have a slightly over average spending in, in the European Union and we are uh, in poor performance indicators. The Finnish health system is actually doing quite well. But we have an issue relating to the access, making the distinction between the occupational health care and the, the public health care. And it is per se, per se for this group who is now being under scrutiny that they fall under this public health system where, of course, there are quite extensive waiting lists and, and issues that should be perhaps addressed. And that might be one of the explanations why, why we see that there are indeed uh, lower estimations. But that brings me to the next point I would like to make. Because basically this data, even though it's using good data, it does do uh, methodologically interesting things. It also uses indicators that are actually looking at self-rated health. And these kind of indicators, of course, are very much uh, prone for subjective bias, saying that employment, especially in the Finnish context, where employment is such an important norm, we identify ourselves through our wage work. Uh, so being out of the uh, work, perhaps, might make you uh, decline to say that, well, it is indeed because of the fact that I'm in poor health. So that might be this kind of what we talk in, in science about uh, desirable answers that are then given for this self-reflected self, uh, 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 status of health. So I would say it might be something to do with the data as well. Okay, thank you. So uh, kind of putting this together, uh, you suggest that one part could be that the, the healthcare system mm -hmm. in Finland doesn't recognize the uh, unemployed um, health service needs, and that's one explanation. But the also the other one is, is something for the uh, kind of a Lutheran uh, work ethic, ethics, meaning that if you are uh, uh, unable to find a work, it's it's kind of a safer to express these problem as health problems than admit that uh, it's a, you have a you know failed to find a job. For example. Yeah, that was oh, a very you. good thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. What about Thea? You wanna? Well, as Mina said, uh, jobless do not have an actor like uh, occupational health care uh, to refer them to rehabilitation or, or to coordinate and manage their uh, overall situation. So that is a big problem. Mm -hmm. And um, also the health problems of the jobless may not be known to the authorities. Uh, health care of the unemployed uh, requires lots of skills, so um, health problem, problems and problems in ability to work may go unrecognized, uh, especially when uh, unemployment persists for longer. Okay, that's very nice. And uh, uh, Perhaps we should uh, have a comment from our uh, colleagues uh, in the in, in uh, virtual world. Um, Hervik, uh, you are um, one of the uh, uh, experts and, and researchers uh, behind this work. Uh, what is your uh, take on these uh, these uh, uh, points that, that uh, Minna and and, and Teja just made? And now I think we need to it's wait that seconds. thirty seconds. Wait. And also, I'm not sure that can I hear them. Yeah. So. Okay, our technical teams uh, indicate that we might have too much uh, time delay and, and problems with, uh, with, our, uh, with our panelists uh, in, uh, in, in online. And uh, apologies for Mikko and Herwig and um, uh, well, our technical teams trying to solve things out, but it seems that we have to manage ourselves more than the present. Uh, yes, uh, you can take the computer few months. Okay, let's, so, um, let's continue. Um, the second main problem, uh, sorry, uh, results of the report was that 
um, those without job and, and uh, precarious uh, position in the labor markets, usually they don't face just one employment barrier. They usually face multiple. And if I remember correctly, it was uh, over 70 percent who face more than two, uh, sorry, more than one uh, barriers. So, um, what, what what do you think um, uh, is is the Finnish employment and healthcare and um, service system uh, uh, able to coordinate this kind of, of a multi-faced uh, 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 tackling of of these uh, multiple? problems uh, in employment. I mean, this of course requires some kind of a coordination mm -hmm. in the state level mm -hmm. and the municipality level, which in, in Finland is, is uh, always been a, been a bit of a, a big issue. Mm -hmm. So, Minna seems to be ready to, to give a first opinion. Please always. do. Always. Always. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pasi. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, well, as, as we were listening at, at uh, the speakers from the ministry, of course, there's a lot of attention being paid towards the, the issues of bringing different departments working together and being, being able to provide uh, benefits and services in, in, in an adequate way. But of course, that is, uh, this is, it is one of the big issues uh, also for the, for the future reform and for, for improving the quality of, of the outputs from, from these systems is that basically what, what we do see is that we have a very systemic perspective when it comes to dealing with social risks. So we basically look at that we have the employment policy that is dealing with unemployment and employment. We have the health policies that are dealing with health. We have uh, the, the, the um, uh, reintegration and rehabilitation part is slightly separate of that. Training is separate. So basically we end up having these different kind of silos, administrative silos that are really good in doing what they do. But there's a lot of uh, well need uh, in, in this kind of understanding that we should see uh, jobless or job uh, seekers as individuals having their individual needs in order to bring a cooperation to these kind of uh, services and, and benefit systems. So when jobless they face multitude of barriers as, as OECD report shows, they would really require different kind of integrated services uh, and, and better switch between the benefits and the services. And as, as you were saying, Pasi, benefits are administered at the central level. At Kela, we have services at the municipal level. We have different kind of services at the municipal level. And we all need to bring them together and integrate in order to understand uh, how we can actually respond to these very diverse needs. And that is, uh, there are a lot of discussion of this kind of uh, elements. We have pilots on multi-professional uh, work teams. We talk about one single service shop centers, basically where you can provide uh, information and, and basically give more tailored uh, uh, help for the job seekers. But of course, this is something we can improve quite a lot. And looking at the results of this report, we also do have to do a lot more. Thank you. It seems to be obvious that this is not just employment uh, policy no. issues, it's for social and health policy and education policy too. Yes. And also dragging that way the also the local level of uh, as a state level. So, uh, um, so um, Teja, what is your opinion? Well, I think the uh, key word here is information. Uh, difficulties in data transfer usually occur when, when uh, our customer uh, has to deal with different actors mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when we um, meet and identify the needs of our customer, uh, information is, is the key. Mm -hmm. We need lots of information so that we can identify the needs of our customer. Yes, that's true. And, um also, it seems to be that also the information uh, structure and administration is, is somehow uh, um, very, very diversified in Finland. I mean, um, yes, and uh, also uh, we have um, deficiency in our legislation. There are gaps. Uh, so, from what I understand, uh, uh, there is um, there is no access to proper information and. That is the problem. 
Yes, and I, I think there's also technical uh, issues yes. and also legislative mm. issues yes. and, and etc. And we have the European Union GDPR. Yes. So we also <laughs> have limitations of that. Of course. So yeah. it, it's a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge for us. Mm. Okay, thank you. And um, so um, these were the barriers of employment, and uh, and the uh, the study goes uh, beyond and uses state groups. Uh, that are, are facing a specific uh, combination of these employment barriers. And the aim is to, uh, uh, to give it to uh, design and, and direct uh, our employment and other uh, policies. Um, the study uh, identified eight uh, groups uh, that face a different type of, of employment barriers. And these are already mentioned in the, uh, in the uh, uh, program, but I can uh, read them loud now uh, because I think they are very catchy names. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they are the rural inactive uh, population and the un unstable work uh, group, then the skilled retires, and then there's uh, urban sub, uh, sub cheekers, and then there's uh, female carers, and then there are low skilled youth, and uh, prime age low skilled individuals, and then uh, the last uh, uh, eight. Uh, group is the uh, individual with the limited financial incentives. So um, what is your take on these? I mean, do they really uh, grasp the, uh, at, at least your imp uh, opinion, do they really uh, fit your uh, kind of, of a view that uh, what kind of uh, people, are these relevant and accurate groups, in your opinion, uh, describing the uh, the kind of, of employment barriers in different groups in Finland. Let's say uh, uh, they are first, first yes. on that. Uh, well, yes, but there were some surprises for me there. Uh, for example, the group six, um, men in urban areas um, who are uh, um, who have difficulties in job search, the urban job seekers, as they were co called, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that group, particularly, I find I find it um, surprising that this group, um, despite all their efforts, remain locked uh, uh, locked out of the employment market. Explanation being that, like you already uh, discussed earlier, and also in the report, and uh, Emily mentioned that uh, the yes, we often look at the benefits and concentrate on them. So, so I think we should emphasize the role of services and guidance. So what about Minna? Well, just to keep on, on a little bit on the discussion, of course, Finland does spend quite a lot in uh, active labor market policies. If you compare in, in Europe uh, standards, actually, people uh, we do uh, use uh, money, but they seem to be going to a very limited group of people. So that might be indeed the reason that there are people who don't know uh, that they could have some uh, support and don't find for some reason uh, these, these, these services. Uh, but for me, when I was reading the report, uh, I, I see many, many, uh, <laughs> many of these models that uh, also are very uh, quite typical in, in many other countries in Europe, uh, especially in the Netherlands, where I have uh, done my uh, extensive uh, career and now returning to Finland. Uh, but basically, uh, what, what we do see is, uh, and what is interesting in the Finnish perspective, is indeed uh, the dominance of Group 1, the rural inactives, also, to some extent, Group 8, uh, the young, uh, young with uh, no labor income, they, they seem to be a group that we don't so commonly find elsewhere. Uh, so what, even though we are talking about two very different kind of groups, but basically where it comes down to is, is that they are both groups uh, that share the element of not actively be so seeking uh, employment. And, and groups that might be considered as having a considerable distance to the labor market and also, of course, activation measures. So they have, uh, especially in the second group, they have very little uh, incentives to, to go and, and find employment. And that is quite interesting from the European perspective because this is a very, very unknown phenomenon. 
in, in, in European standards, if you look at the Netherlands, for example, where the activation measures are very stringent, uh, it is not possible to receive benefits uh, as is social assistance, for example, if you do not take up uh, uh, employment or you don't take up activation measures. You have to be participating. You have to take the part that you also share the responsibility of your employ employment. So in that sense, I think this is uh, something to be considered uh, quite unique uh, in, in, the, in the European perspective. It's something that Finland should also reflect quite, uh, quite deeply. Uh, what does this actually mean about our policies? What does it actually mean? Uh, what, what is actually the aim of these policies? Uh, so that, that was interesting for me to see that there are groups that I don't recognize from other countries. Yes, thank you. Definitely the uh, rural inactive, uh, yes. at least that was... Yes, uh, definitely. 26% you know. is huge. And it's also the biggest group. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, so, um, Teja, what is your uh, take on the rural uh, inactive? Uh, for example, I mean uh, uh, the uh, the report and um, Emily suggested that uh, the best policy uh, for this uh, rural inactive group would be uh, combining health and employment support because they are a bit elderly, but also they are living in the rural areas. I mean, uh, could it be uh, enough or uh, or training programs? Well, um, I think. Um I was thinking about uh, social assistance and the long-term mm -hmm. use of it. Okay. Um, I think uh, the incentives to work should be revalued, and um, social assistance is meant to be a, a last resort kind of uh, financial assistance, so that the long-term use and the group who uh, the long-term recipients, I think we need to look them in more detail. Mm -hmm. and if I can take upon this, uh, of course, the rehabilitation or even active, uh, extensive uh, uh, issue, uh, well, at a kind of trainings, it might be difficult for some groups actually to be able to, to enter the labor market. But I think we should IT and not being uh, in, 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 in isolation in, in a village somewhere, not being part of the society anymore. I think we should uh, e re-evaluate of, of thinking where we actually want to integrate them for. Is it only the labor market or should we also look at other kind of integration measures that actually try to improve the quality of their lives as well? Mm. And eventually, perhaps some of them actually come back to the labor market through that path. Okay, so uh, if I'm taking your uh, um, uh, discussions, um, uh, Am I wrong or do I get a wrong impression that uh, uh, the, the group age, which is uh, rather unique uh, for Finland, uh, in, uh, at least in uh, international comparison, that might be the, uh, the uh, young adults in, in social assistance? Uh, Perhaps, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that might make sense. So, uh, and, um, it seems to be a quite diverse group because if you look at uh, the, 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 the more detailed discussion of this group, uh, which is in the report, you can also see that they, they are sometimes also people with care responsibilities. Mm -hmm. so there might be some uh, people staying caring, caring for their children at home. Uh, there might be some who also have health issues. So it seems to be quite diverse group, but I think this, this issue of long-term uh, recipiency in, in uh, social assistance, especially with this kind of young group of people, is something we should really be more aware of and, and understand what is going on there. And from what I understand, uh, difficulties in job search and uh, um, uh, low education uh, go hand in hand mm -hmm. with mental health mm -hmm. issues uh, among the young. Um, over the last 20 years, um, the proportion of young people receiving sickness-based benefits has more than doubled. Mm -hmm. So uh, from what I can understand, um, the problems with, with uh, study and workability and uh, the many risks of exclusion mm -hmm. are somehow intertwined and, uh, and this, uh, exclu uh, this process should be um, uh, addressed more quickly than now, uh, more early, earlier than, than we can do now.
Okay, so, uh, so is it a situation that um, Finland kind of uh, leave uh, young adults, in this case, kind of uh, uh, a bit alone uh, with their benefits and uh, not providing training or other opportunities and services uh, in the early stage, perhaps? I would say that it is, especially if we are, and, and one of the big things that come from this report is that we should target everything. Everything should be targeted. And the more, this is of course coming from uh, uh, Walter Korpi and all the big legends huh? in, in, in our, our, our field saying that the more you target, the more you actually polarize, the more you actually exclude people. And the more you try to find universal uh, uh, ways of helping people, the better. And therefore, also, we should not only steer everything towards targeted uh, measures, but also make sure that the basic services, the basic structures, the universal uh, part where we are so proud of as, as Finns in our welfare states, that they also are there, and we don't start to crumble those. Because those are indeed those elements that help us to make sure that we also preventively try to, to see before things start to go wrong as well. Okay. And um, it seems that even the, the kind of a basic, basic uh, services like a health services mm. are more or less absent uh, or, or at least uh, not integrated as well as they mm. should be. I mean, it uh, seems to be, especially for the mental health uh, issues. We see a lot of uh, students, for example, struggling nowadays with mental health issues. Uh, they have, uh, well, the, the therapy times are very limited. You have to wait a long time if you get anything. So of course, yes, there's something that is of course part of, of why we mm. then find these kind of uh, groups, unfortunately. Clearly, we need more cooperation and more cl closer mm -hmm. uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. And more gatekeepers, perhaps, who in early stage can actually see, okay, here things are starting to go mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, before uh, we are running out of time, so perhaps I should remember uh, why I promised to come in uh, uh, the service panel to ask what is your take or uh, advice to the social security reform uh, on this report. Um, so, uh, so what is your take? I mean, what, what would, you, would be your advice for uh, social security uh, committee and, and the people who are, are working for the reform? Uh, taking this report on, on, on in general on, on this issue. Yeah. So should we uh, start there? Yes, uh, well I find that um, financial incentives to work and benefits provisions have uh, received considerable amount of attention in the public debate in Finland mm -hmm. and um, uh, often these are na uh, viewed very narrowly uh, 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 based on the calculation rules of only one individual benefit. For example, um, employment benefits. Um, uh, we often talk about the exempt amount, which is the amount you can earn uh, without it affecting your unemployment benefit. And even if you earn more than ch just that amount, um, the formula for calculation calculating the benefit is actually fairly generous. So we find this to be encourage, encouraging and uh, uh, therefore it receives a lot of attention. However, um, this report shows us that there are other barriers than just motivational barriers and financial gain from work uh, is only one perspective and one problem. So I think for me, that is a, an important message that we should not concentrate uh, too much on the uh, benefit legislation. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, and the report is a very good start in this. They have uh, listed and ident identified eight barriers, mm. and, uh, and it's giving a much more uh, uh, diversified and richer picture on the, uh, the ob obstacles of employment uh, than just simple uh, tapering rate of the single benefits. Yes, it really highlights the diffi di difficulties that uh, jobless face and um, uh, suggests that their lives and uh, circumstances are far from simple. Mm. So maybe 
we have to accept that uh, there are no simple solutions. That could be uh, in general <laughs> rule in life, in, in general, I think, especially in social security, uh, I think. Uh, so what about Min? So. Yes, I absolutely uh, uh, applaud your, your point, and I think you make a very important point that we are very much engaged in discussion how we, we push people back to the labor market. That, that has been the, the, the discourse very, very tensely, and it's not only Finnish discourse, it's also elsewhere. And I think the report is, is doing a good job in showing us where the gaps are, this kind of mismatch of uh, people's skills with jobs. It shows the difficulties that Finland has geographically when we have, of course, we have the core and we have the periphery and a lot of activation measures should take place in the periphery. And, and it is, of course, uh, something that uh, the government has already noted. I, I, I see that uh, very much coming back in the social security reform. So all the, the, the new dimensions that are part of that, simplifying the system, uh, improving interconnection between the benefits and the work, integrating benefits and so on and so forth. But I think what this report is doing is, is giving us a, a quite a quite a nice view on, on the importance of recognizing the problems and the needs and the challenges that actually are behind joblessness. And we can't fix these problems of trying to fix the current institutions. We can't solve them by giving more sticks or more carrots because it has been shown many times that sticks and carrots don't work alone uh, or, or they don't work full stop. So we need to find new kind of interventions that actually do work. And I think when we started from the perspective that we need to understand the challenges behind joblessness, we need to bring the right people together. And in the end, also provide these people who are trying to work on these policies and these, these services, give them resources and give them time actually to make it happen. Because many a times these kind of great reforms comes, come together with a huge budget cuts, a huge austerity. And my research in the Netherlands has also shown that it's very, very seldom that uh, policy innovations actually take place in, in, in the area of austerity. So if you cut at the same time and you push these kind of services or you give a mandate that you have to make things better with less resources, uh, money-wise but also personal-wise, it barely leads to anything else than perhaps new kind of problems. Thank you. Uh, that was a very, uh, very good closing speech in the sense you have the whole heart. Uh, like I said, uh, it's not just the legislation, it's not just uh, uh, the services, it's the combination of these two, but also the resources. I mean, yes. you can't have results without resources. And uh, the whole um, uh, issue of, of, of the employment barriers uh, that people face are both individual, uh, geographical, uh, in the system, and, so, and you need to take them in the holistic view. Yes. And this OECD report was, you know, the, the one big st step uh, in this uh, direction. And I hope the uh, uh, the Finnish uh, uh, policymakers will, will read it very thoroughly. And make use of it, yes. Make use of it too. <laughs> thank okay, thank you. Thank you. And apologies for Herrick and, and Mikko for uh, not being able to participate. This was the uh, for technical problems. But thank you. We close the panel here. Thank you. Thank you, Pasi, uh, and thank you, panelists, a lot. And sorry again for the technical problems, but I uh, hope you got something to take away from this this event. And uh, uh, and in Finnish, I'll say that keskustelu jatkuu Twitterissä tunnisteilla työttömyys, työllisyys ja sosiaaliturvauudistus. Kiitos kun olitte mukana. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day. <laughs>